Hallelujah. But trust in Jesus. Guys, I want to share my heart with you today. And I'm sure some, some will probably be disappointed that I'm not preaching a more election-minded sermon. Some will probably be happy about that. But all of us should be empowered through the word today. Open your Bibles to Acts. We just finished a year-long study on this book, but we're going to start there this morning. In the first chapter, it's such, gosh, man, it's such an odd, odd question. But at the same time, I can see myself in this one question. I want you to think about the background of this statement being made. Gen- uh, Genesis is not his name. His name is Jesus. Genesis had just resurrected. Jesus had just spent three and a half years here on earth fulfilling every word that the Father had for him to fulfill. He fulfilled every messianic prophecy. It's just amazing. You, I mean, nobody could create this to happen. I mean, it's totally God. God, Jesus came and he fulfilled the word. And as we celebrated in communion, he went to the cross and he died for our sins after living this perfect life, being born of a virgin. And he fulfilled everything. And he gave this incredible mission to the disciples of going in the world and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Say gospel of the kingdom with me. That's going to be our theme this morning, the kingdom. And Jesus is resurrected, and these guys never got it like one time. That's why I relate to the disciples, because I rarely get it. A lot of times Jenny looks at me and says, you just don't get it. I'm like, I I understand, I, I don't get it. They never got it. They were off in left field. The entire time he was here. They were following him and they, they loved the miracles. They loved the power of God. They loved the presence of Jesus. But they had something that they really, really, really wanted Jesus to do. You ever have that where you just pray and you're like, God, I really, really, really want you to do this. I want you to do it this way. I want you to do it in this timing. Anybody ever been stuck in that land, or maybe you're in that land right now? It's not wrong to have prayer requests and to have desires for God to answer in our lives. That's actually what we're supposed to do. Let our petitions be made known to Him. But our petitions, our opinions, our desires, no matter how good they can be, are not the kingdom. Now, I'm going to say that again. No matter how much you want something or how much you feel like this is what God should do, that is not on the same level playing field that the gospel of the kingdom is on. And there was this divide between Jesus and his disciples. He spoke on the kingdom throughout his entire ministry. Capital K, the kingdom of God. And he kept saying it over and over and over. Every time, though, he said kingdom, they were thinking Israel. Because you and I both know that, especially during the time Jesus came, they were occupied by Rome. Roman garrisons and soldiers were everywhere. And they had totally conquered Israel at the time. And they were living under the thumb of Roman rule. You know, I I can see that. You know, we have freedom this morning that we celebrated. We thank the veterans that have served to protect that freedom, that God-given freedom. But just place yourself in their shoes this morning. Imagine that we weren't like we are. Imagine that we didn't have the freedoms that we possess, even attending and worship here this morning. Imagine if that wasn't something we could freely do. Imagine... Taxes levied on you. Well, that's not hard to imagine. (laughs) Taxes levied on you and a foreign government coming into the United States telling us how we can live our lives, when we can go out, when we can stay in, when we can go to the temple, how we are to pay taxes, how we're to do everything. Now, government itself is not anti-God. God actually established government. But at the same time, imagine if it was a foreign government that had their 
thumb on us and you couldn't move without them saying so. Boy, that would be awful. That's where Israel was. And their prayer request was exactly like yours and my prayer request would be, God, get them out of here. I'd pray some of those prayers like David prayed, break their jawbone, God. Yeah, well, that's not a very spiritual prayer. Well, the man after God's own heart prayed that frequently. Lord, break their jaws. Smite them with all thy holy smiting, God. And restore to us the kingdom of Israel. Because the kingdom of Israel is where it's at. That's where they are in Acts chapter 1. Jesus has resurrected, and I mean, which Jesus, God knows all things. But he's just relinquished this message into their hands. Go into all the world, preach the gospel of the kingdom. Do it. And now we are in Acts 1. He's about to ascend into the sky. You know, it gives us hope. Because these people saw Jesus every single day. They listened to his words with their ears. They didn't just read about it. They, were, they knew him intimately. And they still didn't get it. Verse 6 says, so when they had come together, Jesus is taking them up on the mount. He's about to ascend. You know, you can imagine thinking, uh, God, wow, this has been awesome. And these last 40 days have been incredible. I saw you die on the cross. I ran to the tomb with Peter. And I went in there and I saw where you weren't there. And then you appeared to us. I remember we were behind these closed doors with a locked room. And you just showed up in the midst of it. That was awesome. Hey, let's talk about that. And then you said, you've called me to go to every corner of the earth and just tell people what we saw these three and a half years. That's incredible. Thank you for this awesome mission. Before you go, I just want to say thank you for including me. But that's not what they said. When they had come together, they said, Lord, now can we have the kingdom? Uh, will you restore the kingdom of Israel now? After watching everything, Jesus resurrected. We were with him for about 40 days. It was awesome. And as he's about to ascend, go sit at the right hand of the Father to ever make intercession for me and you. They're there saying, hey, can I have what I want now? Does anybody relate to that? Guys, it's not wrong to make petitions. It's not wrong to have opinions. Everybody has opinions. It's not wrong to have good things that you think God should do. I've got a whole list of them. I'll share them with you if you want me to. But that's not the kingdom. That's not the kingdom. See, guys, we are to be kingdom-minded believers and disciples. We are called to be citizens of a heavenly kingdom taking residence here in earth. And oh, how we quickly replace the message of the kingdom with stuff that's far lesser. And what they didn't realize, oh, this, this really gets us. And it messes with our theology a little bit. Because Jesus answers this. Can I have what I want now? I'm not going to read the spiritual version. I'm going to tell you what he said. Because the spiritual version that's written out says, it's not for you to know the times and seasons that the Heavenly Father has set in store for us. But what he actually said was, that's none of your business. Ooh. I don't like being told that because we make everything our business. That thing that's not my business does not exist because everything's my business. They said, can we have what we want now, please? Is now the time we can have what we want? And Jesus says, that's none of your business. And what they didn't realize in just a few short years, 
Jerusalem would be sacked and there wouldn't be one stone left upon another and it would be totally destroyed. Now that kind of messes with our mind. How can that be God? I'm not saying that it was. I'm saying they were so captivated with the message in their hearts that they missed what Jesus was saying all together. It's about the kingdom. Say that with me. It's about the kingdom. And this is going to hurt your feelings because it hurts mine too. We don't get to have a say on what the kingdom is. I'll say it again. You don't get to say what the kingdom of God is. See, the disciples tried. And he said, that's none of your business. I've got a kingdom. If you will give me your all and live for it, then you'll get to be a part of my kingdom. But they're over here saying, but I like my kingdom. This is what I want. This is what I think your agenda should be, oh God. See, the answer to your prayer request, to your need, the fate of the things that you have weighing in the balance, even the fate of the nation of the United States of America is not the kingdom. See, the kingdom was set in motion a long time ago by Jesus. Now, having said that, I think all those things are important, but it's not the kingdom. God desires to bring his kingdom down. Think about that for a moment. This kingdom that Jesus was talking about the whole three and a half years and the 40 days after the resurrection is a heavenly kingdom where God sits on the throne and Jesus came to establish. And what he desires is for that kingdom in heaven to be brought down here on the earth. And he's given us the opportunity to be a part of it. See, in Matthew chapter 4, Verse 23, it says, when Jesus had first started, he was going throughout all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. There's a reason you won't ever hear anything behind this pulpit, hopefully, that's not based around his kingdom. I want his kingdom to come in our lives. See, when his kingdom comes down, our opinions change. When his kingdom comes down, our agendas are thwarted and abolished and we could care less because now it's his kingdom. And he desires to bring it down. So my question to you today is, what is kingdom work and how do we get it to come down? You follow me this morning. I'm glad three of you are. Say another good 85% of you are mad at me because I told you that Jesus said it wasn't any of your business. But I do love you. My first point this morning, to get kingdom work to come down, you've got to pray for the kingdom. See, there's a prayer that you learned in children's church. Do you remember it? Our Father which art in heaven. You know, we always prayed this before every football game. Because God was obviously on our side. He always is. I think people call the Cowboys America's team. They're actually God's team as well. Before every football game started in middle school. Even in peewee football. We all kneel down with our helmets and it's this moment... And we learned it there. We sang it in children's church. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy. See, even in that, let's tear it apart. Jesus, when he's saying, here's how you're supposed to pray. One of the first things he says is, ask my Father to bring his kingdom down here. When you pray, say, God, like it is up there, the kingdom work that you've established Bring it down here and let that be established here. Your kingdom come and your will be done. God, I can pray that with my whole heart this morning. 
God, let your kingdom come and be established in this church. Let it come and be established in our nation, in our state, in our world. See, it's got to start with prayer. But here's the hard part. Besides praying. Praying's not easy. It's a job. It's a work. It's communication with the Father. But to pray thy kingdom come. There's something inherent in that that you and I don't want to pray. To say thy kingdom come means one thing inherently. I don't get to have my kingdom. I don't like that prayer. I'm pretty pretty picky about a lot of things. Easy Chad Hicks. Jenny, we've been married 15 years and a few months. Actually, this week, celebration of 16 years that I laid eyes on this beautiful thing. <laughs> Knew each other for one month, dated one week, I proposed. <laughs> Oddly enough, she said yes, and the weirder thing was that Greg said Okay. <laughs> Never will forget that day at Huddle House. We went out and had breakfast, and I said, Greg, I just want to, I want to marry your daughter. I'm in love with her. And he's like, who are you? <laughs> you pretty much known you for a week. You seem like a decent guy, but I, I don't. Chasing a rabbit trail. But in those 15 years, see, I'm real picky about food, amongst other things, but we're going to focus on food for this illustration. Anytime we've decided where we're going to eat, how many times have you heard me utter these words out of my mouth? Where do you want to eat? I don't care, just whatever you want to do, Jenny. <laughs> have I ever said once, just, Jenny, whatever you want? No, I wish I could be like that. But see, it starts in my tongue, and I feel this like palate sensation of, ooh, I'm craving Mexican. Yeah, yeah, let's go get some chips and salsa. And then it starts to hit the pit of the stomach, and your stomach, it's like it's screaming from everything inside of you. You want chips and salsa. And then it starts to rumble. You can hear it all through Brinesburg. Because I'm just craving something. I want it. But see, the kingdom says, when Jesus said, here's what you do when you pray, you completely do away with what you're craving and what you desire and what you feel like you want to do and what you want me to do and your agenda for God. And you lay that on the shelf and you say, God, I give that to you and I want your kingdom to come. Guys, it's a little bit harder to pray that now, isn't it? See, I don't know that we would have prayed that in football if his kingdom meant we lost that game. See, we felt like acknowledging him meant we're going to win this game. And I got to see every game from the bench. It, we did. We won a lot. But to live in kingdom-mindedness, it starts with praying the kingdom. And inherent in praying the kingdom is the abolition of your kingdom. See, the disciples struggled with that, and so do you and I. If we're honest with ourselves, how often do we approach the throne of God without any presuppositions of what we think He should do and say, God, I don't care. Whatever. Just come. Just come, God. I want you to come. And if, if it happens this way, that's fine, God. My agenda's done. I can, I can throw that in the trash, God. I, I don't even want it. Lord, restore the kingdom of Israel. That's none of your business. Just pray for me to come. Oh. Well, okay, I guess. No, see, we're called to be kingdom-minded believers. You can. I'm going to exhaust this point a little bit more. You can live the rest of your life standing on a platform of what you think the kingdom is. Where you crawl down off of it, destroy the platform and say, God, come. And guess what? 
he will. Because when he said pray this way, he didn't expect that to be an unanswered prayer. See, that's a prayer Jesus will answer every time. When he sees people crawl down off the platform of their agenda and opinion and just start crying out, God, come! We want you to come! He will answer that every single time. But our agendas get in the way. Once they, we got to pray for the kingdom. Thank you, Dale and Jenny. I appreciate that. Second thing we have to do, we have to live by kingdom priorities. We have to live by kingdom priorities. If you need a verse, Matthew chapter 6, read this. Verse 25 says, For this reason I say to you, don't be worried about your life. It's what you'll eat or what you'll drink. See, there I am in trouble already. Nor for your body is what you'll put on. Hey, isn't that nice to know that they struggled with fashion as well back then? Or I just really want that robe with that certain line and design. Joking. Apparently it wasn't that funny. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothing? And verse 33 later goes on to say, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And thank God for this next verse. All these things will be added unto you. Let me tell you something else about the adding unto you. Might not always be added unto you like you think it should. But, if you seek first the kingdom and he comes, that's really not going to matter that much anymore. How much time we waste with wrong priorities. Don't worry about this and worry about that and worry, 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 worry. Let me tell you what worry is. It is wasted time that you're not spending seeking the kingdom. See, worry is nothing more than wasted time. You cannot worry and seek the kingdom at the same time. Jesus drew a distinction. And he said, you can live this way. I'll let you. All the time, well, what am I going to eat? How's this going to happen? I really want this. We can't afford to buy clothes this month. We want clothes. We need this. We say you can just take that and throw it away and just say, God, I want your kingdom to come. See, he said not only to pray for the kingdom, your kingdom come, which means the abolition of your kingdom, demolition of your kingdom, abolishment of your kingdom, or to seek the kingdom after praying for the kingdom. See, there's something inherent in that as well, guys. Seeking the kingdom can't mean you're seeking everything else. I told you this wasn't going to be the most popular sermon. But that's why I like preaching out of the Bible. Because your argument's not with me. It's with Jesus. Hey, how many people have worried in this election season? I feel like we would have been a lot more fruitful to seek the kingdom. All right, I'll stop. (laughs) Point three, pray for the kingdom. Say that. Prioritize the kingdom. And here's the third thing. See, this brings it down into our own world. Jesus wanted them to live by kingdom principles. 
Matthew chapter 7 is one of the most terrifying verses in the Bible to me. Verse 21 says this, it's not terrifying to me, but I understand that I have worried about this a lot over my life, and I wasn't seeking the kingdom when I was worrying, so there. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Guys, that's drawing a distinction by those who claim to be Christians who call out on Jesus. Now these are Jesus' words here. I'll be honest, I've lived as a Lord, Lord Christian a lot, especially as a younger guy. Because I wanted to have, I called it fire insurance, because I didn't want to go to hell. That's right. I was a Lord, Lord Christian as a young man. I was a Lord, Lord Christian. I come to church, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, but I wasn't living according to the will of the Father and doing the will of the Father. I was crying out, God, forgive me. I don't want to go to hell. And I still don't want to. But I wasn't doing the will of the Father. And Jesus says to enter into the kingdom, it's more than just lip service. And I'm telling you, church, this gets down where we are. There's a lot of lip service Christians today. And I know this because I spent a significant portion of my life as one of them. Lip service. Jesus wants your everything. He doesn't want your rear end in a seat on Sunday morning. I mean, we shouldn't forsake the assembling of the brethren, but that's not it. It's about doing the will of the Father. Man, guys, he's calling out for us to prioritize him and to live by kingdom principles. And stop just being close, like association with Jesus. See, there's a lot of association with Jesus when it's convenient. Convenient association with Jesus. That sounds like a disease. C-A-J. Convenient association with Jesus. It's running rampant. Kingdom principles. Are you mad at me yet? Because I don't want that. I really do love you, but I want you to get what Jesus is saying to us today. Pray the kingdom. Prioritize the kingdom. Live by kingdom principles. Matthew chapter... 10 is our fourth point. He instructs us how to minister the kingdom. See, we've prayed for the kingdom. We've sought after the kingdom by prioritizing the kingdom. We've lived by the kingdom. And now it's time to take it to someone else. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, As you go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. Tell you something else we've gotten too comfortable with. We've gotten too comfortable with other people's demons, other people's afflictions, other people's problems. When God said, minister the kingdom. We've gotten too comfortable just knowing that old John who works next to me on the assembly line, he's a good guy, he's not a believer, but we get along well. You might be in John's life to minister the kingdom to him. Actually, you are in John's life to minister the kingdom to him. Well, I'm not really spiritually gifted as an evangelist. Well, I wish Jesus said that for all spiritually gifted evangelists, Go about to everybody and say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I don't see that caveat in there. For those that are extroverts, minister the kingdom. 
For those that are friendly, minister the kingdom. Everybody who calls on the name of Jesus has this mission to preach the kingdom. Now see, there are effective methods of evangelism, and there's ineffective methods of evangelism. I don't believe in cramming Jesus down people's throats. I believe in showing people the love of Jesus and inviting them to a life-changing experience because I had it myself. See, our methodology is important because there's effective and ineffective, but doing nothing is unacceptable when he's called us to preach the kingdom. And actually, we sang this morning, I love that verse, and tears just started running down my eyes. It is well. Oh, Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. Okay. I'd go higher and sing the rest of it, but I started it too high. You know what we sang. Uh, I always start songs too high. Sing the national anthem one time. And I start, oh, look at that man. We get by the dawn's early light, we are in deep trouble. <laughs> it's really not good at all. But we're seeing it, Lord, come. We just want, we want Jesus to come. Lord, come back into all this. Hasten it, Lord, come. Actually, the hastening of the Lord's return is in your hands. You mean hasten my return? I've told you when I'll come back. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations. Greek, pontata ethne. All ethno-linguistic tribal groups. And then the end will come. Just come back. We'll get busy being obedient, son. Minister the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We've got to pray the kingdom. We've got to seek and prioritize the kingdom. We've got to live by kingdom principles. But we also have to learn how to preach the kingdom. Man, it's important. I'm fired up. My fifth point is this. Because there is a part in that ministering the kingdom that kind of is outside of our ability, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. I can tell you this, Richie Clendenin never saved anybody. Richie Clendenin never healed anybody. I've probably made some people sick. <laughs> some of you are a little sick to your stomach right now. Richie Clinton never cleansed anybody. Probably made some people dirty. I hope I never possessed anybody. How do we do that? It's the kingdom power. See, kingdom prayer, kingdom priority, kingdom principle, kingdom preaching. Now we're going to talk about kingdom power. Because back to our original verse, saying, Jesus, please, I want to have what I want. God, restore the kingdom. He said, I actually, just hold on for a few years. There won't be one stone left upon another. You th just hold on. But, but, hey, that's a horrible answer to our prayers. And we think, well, God, you failed us. He never fails. He's never wrong. You might be mad at him for not doing what you wanted him to do, but it didn't mean he was wrong. We were the wrong ones there. He said, that's none of your business, which offended them, and it offends you, and it likewise offends me. Because we try to make everything our business. Can I please? Can I please have this now? And Jesus says, it's none of your business. That's my business. Seek the kingdom. But he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you 
and you'll be my witnesses to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. See, that doesn't seem like an answer to what they were asking. It was an answer, it just wasn't one that they liked. Well, they were just sinners. God would never answer me. It's none of my business. Never. Not I. Me and God are this close. God sends me daily briefings every day telling me what he's going to do. I get that little memo every morning saying, this is how I'm going to move today, Richie. If you would, just grab onto that and just take it because here's me and you. We're like this. You can tell a few people, but I'd rather it just be between me and you because you have special insight nobody else has. No, he says, it's none of your business, but if you'll seek the kingdom, then there'll be a power that comes upon you, and you'll go everywhere, and you'll tell people about me, the dead will be raised, the sick will be healed, demons will be cast out of people, blind will be given sight, lame will leap, the dumb will speak the praises of... No, sorry, it's a song. It's a Christmas song. That's not an answer. Yes, it is. God, I really, really want this. This is what you're doing. God, please, I want to have what I want to have. This is the kingdom, God. It's obviously the kingdom because it's what I want. Actually, that's none of your business, Richie, but if you'll get down to business, there'll be a power that comes up on you, and you will change this world. Now, that's a question. I'm not expecting an answer. I'm not expecting an answer, but I want you to pose this to yourself. On option A, I give you the driver's seat of your life. I give you the steering wheel. Imagine Jesus take the wheel was never written. Richie, take the wheel. Take it from my hands. Yes, Lord, thank you. You're in the driver's seat of your life. You get every prayer request answered. I mean every one of them. When you have the inkling of a thought, God fulfills everything that you say. Because after all, it's about you and what you want. You obviously know more than he does. Every prayer you ever prayed immediately answered. And you can build your life and use God as a genie in a bottle. Boy, wouldn't that be something? Lord, let there be a Ferrari in the parking lot this morning for me. I noticed nobody going, getting up to go get that for me. You're in the driver's seat. That's option A. That's a pretty good option, you got to admit. You with me? That's pretty good. I'm telling you, if that's on deal or no deal or let's make a deal, there we go, let's make a deal, and that's behind door one that I'm looking at, you can give that up or check what's behind door two. I'd say, hey, I'm going to hold here. This is pretty good stuff. I'm driving this thing. Man, imagine God building your kingdom. Or door two. You give the driver's seat up. Well, that was powerful. Wow. You give the driver's seat up. And you let Jesus be the Lord. You might not ever have something answered that you think should happen. Can't promise you one thing will ever be answered. But in this seat, you touch kingdom purpose for the rest of your life. And your kingdom crashed a long time ago. And you're letting Jesus drive you. And in that seat, there's also a power. Man, it just comes upon you. 
when you see demon-possessed people like Jesus, you just say, hey, you're done here. Go ahead and go. Or you come upon somebody that's sick and you have a Peter anointing and you say, rise and walk in Jesus' name. This is done. See, I'm ministering under kingdom power right now as a kingdom evangelist. We're talking about his kingdom to come. Rise and walk. So you might not ever get to build your kingdom. You had to lay that down. Option one or option two. I'll tell you, and I'll be honest. I've made that decision, but it wasn't easy to make. You think, well, obviously choose Jesus. Yeah, that's the right answer. But that's a lot tougher to make than you think it is. Because it comes nothing short of the death of Richie Clendenin. Nothing short of me saying, okay, God, if it never happens, I'm all in. If I never see my kingdom built the way I want it built, that's tough. Because deep in the inside of our heart, we still think that we are driving this thing. And there came a time I knelt. And you know what? It's a continual decision. Because once I make that decision, I always find Richie trying to yank the steering wheel like a pathetic backseat driver with Jesus. Say, God, uh, (laughs) stop telling me where to go. I don't need your GPS. I'm good. Jenny and I spent the weekend away together a few nights. Last night I was driving. I missed a turn, but I never let anybody know it. (laughs) Just kept driving. Like, Well, I'm going to take this turn. Ended up in a pretty rough part of town. (laughs) But here I am sitting here like, I got this. Where are we? Oh, it's fine. (laughs) I know exactly. I just wanted you to see that right there. That's what I wanted you to see. (sighs) You're laughing because you did the same thing. I see it. (sighs) It'll come at the cost of your everything. But man, guys, it is so worth it. It is so worth it worth it to crawl down off of the throne of your life and to die to everything you've ever wanted and say Jesus I just want you I just want you if it meant taking everything that I already have to build my kingdom it's yours I'll take it off my head and I'll throw it at your feet I just want you man it's tough to make that decision but it's that decision that Jesus is inviting us into will you now restore the kingdom that's none of your business if I ever do that will you follow me If you do, I'll give you power to go around the world. See, they made the decision. The word doesn't say that. It's shown by the way they live their lives. It is. Will you restore the kingdom? Can I have what I want now? Please? I'm tired of Caesar being on the throne. We need our own Israeli king up there. We need what we want. That's none of your business if I ever do that. Matter of fact, there's a testing coming in a few years. Everything's going to be destroyed. 
but follow me. And every single one of them, barring John, who we believe died of natural causes, gave their life as a martyr for that cause. They didn't make that. Yes, they did make that decision. And it was proved by the way they lived their life and the way they gave their life. Guys, we're here in Marshall County, Kentucky. I don't want to die a martyr today. But if it happens, it happens. And I'll tell you as your pastor, and I don't say this to pat me on the back because it's not. Because a lot of people made this decision. If it cost me my everything. I'm going. You can have it all. I want the kingdom. I have no idea what time it is. It could be 2 o'clock. I have no idea. I don't really care though. Isn't that great? I'm going back on the diet today after eating like crazy. I don't have anything to go home to anyway. I, <laughs> There's a roast in the oven. Well, I got a cardboard turkey burger. Just hold on. <laughs> Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I've sought your face about what to bring your people today. And Lord, I genuinely believe it's, well, I know. Lord, it's your words. And Lord, you've posed to us a question today. You've posed to us a question and the decision that I laid out before these people, God. Jesus, forgive me, Lord. Lord, I have for so long wanted what I want. And that was even the barometer of if I followed you. And when I didn't get what I wanted, Lord, I got mad at you. And I got mad at everybody else. The truth of the matter was, Lord, I was sitting on the throne trying to build my kingdom. Forgive me, Lord, and I know I'm not alone here today, God. I feel like we've all walked through seasons of that. But you've given us, Lord, the kingdom, and you want to bring it down. But, Lord, we've been so distracted. My goodness, in these last few months, this nation's never been more distracted. The church has never been more distracted than what it is right now, God. And we've even called it the kingdom, and it's not. Jesus, you are Lord, and you are in the driver's seat, Lord, of our lives. And I place you there in mind, God. And we pray as you taught us to, Father. Not some simple prayer, Lord. Actually, one that's very difficult. Your kingdom come. Lord, and I know what that prayer means. It means my kingdom can't. But Lord, even so now, come quickly, Lord. I lay it at your feet. Richie's kingdom. Lord, and I prioritize it in my life today. Lord, we seek first the kingdom. Lord, help us to live by those principles. Help us to preach those principles, to preach the kingdom and to flow in the power therein, Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, I want to ask this question because I know I'm not alone. Who would say, have the boldness to say, who would have the boldness to stand up and respond to this? and say, Pastor, I've been in the driver's seat for a long time. You might even be a believer. This isn't necessarily a call to salvation, although it could be.
Because remember, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. But those who do the will of the Father, who would have the boldness to stand up and say, I've been driving, and when he tries to take me somewhere I don't want to go, I just yank that wheel right back. Who has the boldness to say, I've been sitting on the throne of my own life. Stand to your feet right now. Because that's been me too at times. Guys, we're all over this church. We're all over this church. Here's the good news of the gospel, though. You know what? When we yank that steering wheel back, he's not mad at us. He loves us and he wants his best for us. And he gives us grace and mercy if we'll say, here it is again, Lord. Here it is again. I'm sorry I crawled up in here to drive. I shouldn't have. Let's pray. Guys, we're just going to let the body of Christ be the body of Christ. If you're around somebody standing, sitting to embarrass anybody, but we're just going to love on each other this morning. Reach out and pray with somebody this morning as I pray as well. Come on, church. This is a church where the body gets to be the body. The body gets to be the body. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we crawl down off the throne of our lives today, God. We ask for your kingdom to come, Lord, because we want to be found in you. And today we lay it down, Father. Matter of fact, it's what you said is required to follow you, Lord, to deny ourselves and take up our cross. And that's what we do today, God. We choose you, Lord. We choose you. And as we choose you, Father, Lord, that promise is so strong this morning. Power will come upon us, Lord, to minister the kingdom. So right now, Father, I just pray in Christian Fellowship Church, Lord, I know there's not more standing because some have already made that decision. But right here in Christian Fellowship Church, Lord, may a fresh wind of the power of the Holy Spirit begin to blow through this church, Father, in the name of Jesus where the kingdom can be ministered, Lord, and lives can be changed. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. Here it is, Lord, you can have it all. Lord, we choose you today, God. We choose you, Jesus. And help us to give, to have the wisdom to make it a, a conscience daily decision, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anybody needs further prayer these altars are open I'm going to tell you something today you have sickness in your body these altars are open I believe the power of the kingdom can flow into us today I don't care what the need is are you bound up, afflicted God's given us the kingdom the power of the kingdom to cast out everything see the kingdom is to be ministered today. If anybody needs prayer for anything, these altars are open. Come on up. And we're going to pray with you that his kingdom will come into your situation. We love you guys. We'll see you tonight at 630.